Hey everyone, my name's Christian and you might have seen me playing guitar on YouTube, hopefully. But uh, today I have a special treat and a different kind of video. And I'm going to get into some of the maintenance of my guitars. This is a GNL A-Set Classic. Um, I'll go over a little bit more about what the guitar is as well. But the reason we're going to fix this guitar is we have a broken string here broken E string. Um, and generally when I break one string, I replace all my strings at the same time. Uh, just because if one string breaks, uh, I don't break them that frequently. Uh, if I break one, the rest of the strings are probably already getting a little rusty and getting a little screwed up. And, um, on my actual Fender Stratocaster, uh, same thing's happening. It's hard to tell, but the rust of the strings is starting to mess with my fingers a good bit. So it's kind of time to change the strings on all of them. Uh, but so let's bring in super speed Christian. On this. Um, he's going to blaze through some of the setup here, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about this GNL ASAC classic. Um, it's a swamp ash body, a beautiful maple neck. As you can see, um, Super Christian is looking at the strings now and is probably about to loosen them, getting ready to cut them here. But GNL is a company that was started by Leo, by Leo Fender and George Holt. That's what the GNL is, George and Leo. Um, Leo Fender needs no introduction, creator of Fender guitars, um, innovator that led to Music Man guitars and eventually to this company, GNL. Um, George Fullerton is a longtime employee of Leo Fender, uh, who helped with a lot of the advancements in electric guitars uh, from the 40s all the way up through the 80s. Uh, without getting into some of the drama of the switching between the different companies, uh, I really like the GNL. Uh, Telecaster that I have here because it's a made in America guitar made in Fullerton, California uh, has all of the great features that you would find in a Fender beautiful construction beautiful blue finish as you can see right now uh, right now I'm just t looking at the strings and showing how those golden ends of the strings go through the back of the of the body of the guitar. So anyways, it's a very nice guitar and it sounds very good. The neck feels amazing. As you can see that maple neck is beautiful and it has a nice little coating on it. Um, in order to wipe down the neck and get the grime from my fingers off of it, the rust from the strings playing, Generally, the best thing to use is a lemon oil uh, solution. You can see me rubbing it on the neck of my guitar. Uh, the solution I'm using is Dunlop, and Super Christian is buffing that lemon oil into the fretboards, or <laughs> into the fretboard, and rubbing down the guitar to get everything clean. You have to be careful that the chemicals that you use don't strip off any of the finishing. Because uh, even though guitars look like bare wood, there's really not any bare wood on the guitar. The oils from your hand um, and any exposure to anything can mess with it. Which is why Super Christian just pulled out a spray polish that he's going to use to wipe down the rest of the body of the guitar. As you can see, another great point to this guitar, and the reason I bought it and chose it, was it has the uh, Standard, it's an updated, but it has the standard 
bridge single coil pickup that you would see on a Telecaster. Um, very twangy, very bright, along with that uh, vintage bridge that the strings sit on. It gives it that very twangy, very classic Telecaster sound. But it also has a very nice humbucker bridge pickup, which isn't always as common on a Telecaster. That bigger pickup closer to the neck um, gives it a lot of rounder and richer sounding tones than you could usually see. So I was just showing there, those are the strings that I use. They're, they're the standard Ernie Ball 10s. Uh, some people prefer nines. Uh, string gauge can kind of be a personal preference thing. It kind of depends on the guitar as well, what I would say about strings. But for the vast majority, I use are those are those green. Uh, pack. You just saw Super Christian open. He's trying to carefully set each of the strings on its individual bridge piece, as you saw. And these ASAC Classics have tuning pegs, which have a little cut through the center. So you can literally just place the string through those little cuts in the center of the tuning peg. Uh, that makes it easier to do a luthier's knot. Uh, Super Christian is going to do a luthier's knot on every one of these pegs, which basically it's a way to tie a knot under the wrap of the string. Uh, basically, if you're not a guitar, it's, it's kind of trying to make the string catch as well as possible as you wrap it around the tuning peg so the note that you're playing the string stays in tune note. in that pack of ernie ball strings there are six strings, which is standard for a guitar. But as I said before, I called them Ernie Ball Tens. The reason I called them Ernie Ball Tens is because the highest and thinnest string is 0.10 millimeters in diameter, I believe is the measurement. Uh, the, the numbers correspond to the measurements of the strings. And 10 is lowest, uh, or 10 is highest in pitch. 46 is lowest on that. As you saw, each string that Super Christian picks up has a number on it in that red little pack. There was a 46, another number if you were paying attention, a 26, a 17, and then it should be a 13 and a 10. Another interesting note about what this sped up version of me is doing is he's grabbing this black little tool that is basically a holster that grabs those silver tuning pegs and wraps them quicker for it. But Super Christian is having a little bit of trouble with the string. It happens sometimes. The most rewarding things in life are rarely easy. But that makes them all the more worth doing. Looks like he might have that string now. Another thing to keep in mind as you learn to play guitar is I've been playing 
for nearly 20 years. About 17 years now. And I'm still speeding this part up. And you can tell I'm struggling with it a little bit. But that's... You have to do this part in order to have the fun later. And it's rewarding. If you like my video and would like to see me do more videos on guitar maintenance or describing various guitars or even lessons or techniques on guitar, please like, comment, subscribe, ask me questions. I'm an open book and I will uh, answer anything on guitar. It's my favorite thing to do in the world. And the least I can do is help out other people who love the instrument any way that I can. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm, my YouTube videos are going to be, but I'm willing to make whatever videos you guys want to watch. Right now, Christian is going into the tuning of the guitar. Uh, he got all the strings put on, and uh, basically what you have to do is you have to keep retightening them over and over as they stretch when they're new. So he's just, you know, doing hard bends, trying to stretch the strings out real good, and then retightening them. Getting this guitar to a standard tuning. Standard tuning with, with these strings, you want the strings kind of nice and tight, go like this. I have the strat down a half step, but I like having this tally at the E A B G G. He's gonna cut off the ends of those strings there, um, get the jangles out. <laughs> so, um, yeah. This is the finished product of all that tuning and all that cleaning to make the guitar new again. Sound nice. Hope to see you again soon. <laughs>